Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, coming at you with another video of Too Many Bones, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite games of all time. Chip Theory Games sent me some more review copies of expansions, including the Splice and Dice expansion. And when I had our Patreon supporters vote on which type of game they wanted me to record, they voted for the Build a Tyrant mode, which basically means you play through a regular game of Too Many Bones, but as you go, choices you make in combat and such will determine what tyrant you fight. You'll make an entirely unique one. I also had them vote on which gear locks that we control, and it was a pretty strong vote for Tantrum from the core game. This is the Berserker, who's a little tough to keep alive sometimes. And the Lab Rats, which are one of the newest gear locks in the game, and actually a little team of four gear locks who can mix and match and switch in with each other. I'm not going to go through the full steps of setup and the basic rules, because you can see our previous videos for that, but I am going to talk about the changes to setup from the Splice and Dice Build a Tyrant mode, so you can see how that works. So the first decision you have is how many days you want the game to last and how much progress you need to reach the tyrant. I'm going for 8 and 6, the shortest game, which is easier. But this past week was my first week back full-time teaching again, and I'm a bit tired, so we're just going to keep it quick. Based on the length of game you pick, you're going to set up the encounter deck differently. For an 8-day 6 progress game, I'm going to take 4 of these new tyrant encounters. They've got a deck of 10 of these, and I'm taking 4. Just two regular encounters from the base game. And of course, you're starting three or two day cards, whether you're playing a core too many bones or undertow. And I do want to note I'm including content from both 40 Days of Daylor and Age of Tyranny in here, so I have some randomized starting cards, whereas if I was just playing with the core game, I would have the exact same three each time. I'm going to shuffle the Tyrant encounters and the core encounters together, and then stack the day cards one, two, three on top to have my deck ready. I'm going to set up the map. I'm using the separately purchasable little adventure map here. So I've got the day counter on one. Uh, the tyrant is six progress away in Shale Fist. And you just have this one build a tyrant boss fight that you'll use once you reach them, but the other cards will kind of vary things up. And a change to note from the regular setup of the game, you will not build your baddie stacks yet, because you don't know what baddie types your tyrant is aligned with. So we'll get to that in a moment. But you are going to set up a few things on the new Tyrant mat. We've marked the number of days in progress here, and we put yellow markers in the leftmost or topmost position in each of these spots. Uh, whether the boss has extra baddies it's going to put in the baddie queue, whether it attacks in melee or range, and who it prefers to attack and how many people. Next we're going to do an initial splice to set up the basic statistics of our Tyrant. Splice and Dice comes with a bunch of new baddies, most of them dual type, which means they uh, qualify for two of the colors. And for the initial splice, we're going to draw two one-point baddies and two five-point baddies specifically from this pool of new baddies. So we've got a mini-phage, an aggressive geophage, a goblin firecaster, and a troubled trollbold. Troubled trollbold. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to say that. And we're going to use these four baddies we've drawn to set the Tyrant's initial initiative, attack, health, and defense stats. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the baddies we drew and use the highest stat on each as the initial values. So for health, it's definitely this aggressive geophage with eight. And we just mark that with six-sided dice right there. For attack, uh, none of them's going above two. And for defense, nobody above one. And then finally for initiative, they're either four or three. So nice, he's starting a little bit slow. Now we're going to create our full baddie queue, so we're going to look at the types of monsters, and we're going to place a peg in each of these types. So here we've got yellow, red, purple, and blue. And now with those known, we're going to create our baddie queues like normal, except we will include any of the baddies whose type or either type for the dual type ones matches the uh, four we picked. And with that, we're basically ready to go, although we do have another new board called the Lab. And it uses these new Lab dice. You're going to put those in the provided bag and save them for now. You won't need them until day two. And when we get to day two, I'll show you how splicing and upgrading the Tyrant works. But before we get to the full playthrough, let's meet our gear locks and see what's special about them. So first we have Tantrum, who again is from the core game, and I think this is actually the first gear lock I ever played. Tantrum starts with extremely high attack, but zero defense and not a ton of health. And one of the main unique things about Tantrum is he has this rage die that will tick up one value whenever either he gets hurt by somebody or he attacks. And he can exhaust it getting rid of it on his turn to get the benefit, like on this die a lot of bones. But if he goes too high, he has to reset it all the way back down to one. 
And if he can get it to exactly 1.8, he can straight up defeat immediately a one point baddie or advance to the next rage die if he's unlocked it, which lets him uh, defeat even stronger baddies and get cooler effects. He also has the ability to get these throwing axes he can hurl at random baddies across the battlefield. And he has the body count die, which means every time he defeats a baddie, it upticks by one, and he can use it on his turn to heal himself the indicated number of points. Now the lab rats, the newer one, are a bit more complicated. First of all, they've got four smaller player boards instead of the big one you just saw with Tantrum. They've also each got an innate ability and each have their own way to use bones. At the start of the game, you pick two of the four to be in your starting team. I've got Flan, who's kind of the healer and bat lover, and Slank, the fixer who loves cutting things. And you track their health separately, so they each have three health here. But each time I get their total bones up to four, they find another one of their lab rats, and I get a third and then eventually a fourth player board to play around with. Now, a key thing about the lab rats is whenever you upgrade their statistics, they all get that upgrade. So whoever's the active lab rat actually shows what the upgrades are. But then if I uh, switch out Flan for Skank, then she'll have that plus one health. But that also plays into whether you unlock the third and fourth lab rat, because you only get one stat tracking die per lab rat you've unlocked. So if I, for example, started upgrading health and dexterity, I would now be unable to upgrade attack or defense until I got that next lab rat. The next big thing about them is their skills. Each of the four lab rats has their own technology skill-based track they move down, but you can pick any of these trees whether or not you've unlocked the character. The first time you get a skill within a tree, you get the number one, then the next time you get rid of the one and get a two, and then you get rid of the two and get a three. So you're basically upgrading them as you use more training points instead of actually getting more dice. Which is good because you'll notice they only have spots for up to four skill dice anyway, so you don't want to kind of overload them. The dice are keyed to specific lab rats, so these are flans, for example, which means any time a lab rat who is not that character uses them, if they roll this little malfunction symbol, they have to use the die's effect. They can't choose to save it for another turn. And the die goes away completely from the malfunction. You lose it entirely. That one or two or three training points you spent, gone. But that doesn't happen if the correct lab rat is the one using the skill. And additionally, if a lab rat uses their own skill, they get it back. It's not exhausted. So Flan could, for example, use her little healing ability multiple times. And probably the most unique and coolest thing about the lab rats... At the end of their initiative turn, when they're on the battlefield, they can choose to tag out, flipping their icon over. Then at the end of the round, this lab rat will be removed from the board, and you get to tag in a lab rat who has not been in the battle yet. So once they've been tagged out, they can't be chosen. Going on uh, any of the starting gear lock spaces that correspond to their attack type. Now, if your active lab rat is completely defeated and you're off the board, you can't do this anymore. But a cool thing is if you tag out and let's say you only have one health left and you are defeated before the round ends, that doesn't matter. As long as you got the tag out declared, then you'll still be able to put your next lab rat. Although healing them can be a problem because when you rest during the recovery phase, only one lab rat can get all their health back. Uh, knocked out ones recover to one hit point, but the rest have to just sit there. All right, so with our gear locks out of the way, let's get to day one and start our adventure. By the way, one thing I didn't mention as we start the game, because I'm doing the shorter Tyrant run, I'm going to play on the hard difficulty mode, where we don't get any free upgrades at all. Uh, it might be a little bit too tough, and I don't really know the lab rats that well, so they might all get butchered, but I want to see how it goes. So here's our first encounter from Age of Tyranny. Rumors at the Tipsy Troll Tavern. I've heard things in the South are even worse. The human is highly opinionated, but it's obvious he's enjoying the lengthy conversation. I don't see what threat a bunch of monsters up in the mountains is to life here in town. There's some kind of beast sinking every trade vessel that sails the Sibrin. Whole villages are being burned by a huge southern dragon. It's bad. Sure, some of these northern tyrants are scary, but was life in the Deepwood really that great to begin with? Anyway, take this. If you're going to waste your time, the least I can do is try to keep you alive a little longer. All right, so our choices are to take the gear he offered. We get a single trove loot and automatically unlock it, which in one or two players is pretty good. Or we can take the Signet. The Molnor trusts very few. This badge will get you into their inner circle. Okay, so I treat it as loot, which means I might just throw it away. Uh, Molnor Crest. While in your possession, you may go first in a game of Dangerous Darts. <laughs> oh, Dangerous Darts is silly, but I guess it's good to have a better chance of winning. Key thing, though, is I'm automatically getting a training and a progress. Do I want one trove loot or two training? Since I gave up the uh, kind of normal difficulty mode where you get some free trainings, I think I'm going to go for the double training and just hope the trove loot wasn't that good. 
Let's see, for Tantrum, I think I'm going to start with a plus one health and plus one dexterity, so he can actually move to use his attack. And for the Lab Rats, I think I'm going to keep uh, Flan as my active for now. She's a ranged attacker, so if Tantrum can kind of keep enemies off her, she can do a lot of damage. So with that in mind, I think I'll get her first skill, which has a chance to heal and or get rid of negative status effects. And then I think one more health is good for her, because that gets her and Slank both plus one. And by the way, I didn't mention their innate. Slank says that he ignores malfunctions, so I'm never going to lose a Flan dice, even if he's using it, although he won't get it back to reuse over and over. And Flan's is really nice. On her turn, she can re-roll one unused die, so she has a better chance of getting off her healing effects, for example. And with that, we've earned one progress, and we're about to be on to day two, but first, let's pick our recovery options. So, of course, the only thing that really makes sense is the scout. Let's have the lab rats. Okay, they can get a one or a five. Let's go for the five. Hoof, a dragon igniter. Six life, very quick initiative. Two attack on both of us? Yeah, we're putting that guy on the bottom. And Tantrum may as well also scout. Oh, nice, but I think uh, he'll do a one, since it'll matter for our next battle. There's one of the new ones, an Orc Witness. He has Return, which means if he's not the last baddie defeated, he goes back in the baddie queue. And he's got Rating, which means he'll go up to a 2 attack instead of 1, if there are any of the blue Axe-type guys. But our baddie doesn't have any of them, so the only way that would happen is if we got another double-type. So I think we're probably pretty safe, so we'll leave this guy. Now let's get to the new mechanic with the Lab. At the beginning of each new day, except day 1... You draw four random lab dice from the dice bag, and you roll them. And then in player order, you each take a die and put it in one of the unused spots until all of them are filled. And here's how it basically works. As you defeat baddies, at least the first four, if there's more than four in the queue, they're going to go in the numbered spot. So the first baddie you kill will go here, second here, third here, fourth here. And then at the end of the battle, you're basically going to see whether or not the tyrant levels up. And the process is slightly different for each of these. Like for initiative, if either adjacent baddie has a higher initiative than the tyrant's current value, you raise it by one. For attack and health and defense, you sum up the values for the two baddies adjacent. And if that's higher than the tyrant's value, you raise it by one. And then for things like preferred target or extra baddies or attack type... If either of the two adjacent baddies is better than the tyrant, you move their peg one to the right or one down. Whenever it reaches a new red spot, its value changes. So like the Orc Witness targets weak enemies instead of strong. So if he was next to this die on the lab, then the tyrant would move one here. And that's whether you have one or two enemies that match that. You also might put some enemies down here to share their skills with the tyrant. Lots of stuff going on. And you can clearly see that scouting ahead is super important and also the order you defeat enemies. So knowing about the Orc Witness is pretty good here. If we have a peaceful encounter day two, we're just going to build a bad EQ and then put them in the order they come out, which means he will be in the one spot. And if we have a battle, we know we're going to kill this guy last, so he'll be in the four spot. And since he does have that target weak ability, I want to put this far away from anywhere he might end up since he'll upgrade the Tyrant with it. This one honestly should not matter because we won't see any of that until probably the 20 point baddies. Now attack, we're not going to get any less than one. So I'll put that so that it'll apply no matter where he is. And then initiative can be down here. All right, now let's see our actual encounter. Insult to injury. Three different types of shrieks, each with its own unique, ear-splitting obnoxiousness. This is how life outside the gates of Obendar says hello. The races that make up the Ebon don't always care for each other. This particular masochist is toying with a young goblin, kobold, and orc, educating them on how sharp a dagger can be. Attempting to save their own skins, they point in this direction, cover blown. It's hard to blame the victims, they weren't going to escape without some sort of diversion. Thankfully, they stick around to hurl insults while they watch vengeance being served. But let's see, we can either use those guys as a peanut gallery. The orc, troll, and goblin serve as a helpful distraction, which means all the baddies will have careless one on a bone they would hurt themselves one. Or usher the victims to shelter. A BQ is baddie points. No defense dice may be rolled during round one for gear locks or baddies. Well, here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> I currently have zero defense dice for anybody unless I uh, sub in slank. So I think this sounds like the perfect way to start the battle. So it's day two, and we have two gear locks, so four baddie Q points. That's uh, three ones plus our orc. The orc's hiding back there with three initiative. Next we have a goblin bomber, mischief one. That takes away active dice, which means uh, Tantrum could lose his rage before he ever gets to use it. He's also in the back, and very fast initiative. Uh, tipsy troll, that looks a lot more like it. Uh, he heals one, but he can also damage himself one. 
And yeah, just one attack. Not really worried about him. Finally, gosh, another ranged guy. Uh, Hardy can only take one damage per turn, and compound means he uh, attacks equal to the round number. So just one at first, but then getting higher and higher. And it looks like the rolling no defense thing won't matter for them either, because uh, none of them have it. Oh, let's roll our initiative. Come on, five or higher. Ah, uh, no. All right, yeah, so unless that uh, goblin bomber misses, Tantrum's going to have no rage this combat. All right, so I think I'll start uh, Tantrum here, so the troll can't reach him. Oh, wait, I guess it won't matter, because if Tantrum runs up to attack uh, the kobold tracker, the troll will reach him anyway. Well, with that being the case, let's try to uh, kill that goblin bomber. And Flan can just hang out back here for now. She's ranged, so it's not going to matter too much. And good, the orc witness did not get his power for plus one attack. All right, so he is going to attack. So he's going to shoot. He's attacking Flan, since she's the weakest for one. That's fine. All right, goblin bomber will attack first. Uh, he'll attack Tantrum. And I realize the uh, mischief happens whether he hits or not. So Tantrum's rage is gone. Ah, but he did roll a bone to hurt himself. That's great. Hey, why don't you do that again, bunny? That would be excellent while he attacks the lab rats. Yes, all right. I guess, can he trigger careless twice? Ah, uh, no, it can only be triggered once per turn, but still, didn't do any damage, that's great. Oh, you know what, I'm sorry, the uh, kobold is the one who went, not the orc witness, but uh, that's fine, because they have the same attack this turn. All right, and lab rats are up. Uh, she could use her skill die, but two of the three sides will just take away negative uh, status effects, whereas only one of them will actually heal anybody, and we're only hurt one, so it doesn't seem worth it. Oh, and Tantrum did lose uh, his rage. So she'll just attack twice on, um, I guess the Kobold Tracker. Okay, and uh, he's got Hardy, so sadly it's just one damage. And now Tantrum, I wish I had gone to the right. Uh, I'm going to take my chance with a one attack die after using two dexterity to reach the guy. Oh no, I have uh, four dexterity, so I can still attack with two dice. Great. You know, let's take out that guy before he attacks with uh, two dice next turn. Boom, and got a bone. So this guy immediately goes here, which is uh, great for me, because he doesn't have that symbol, and he has X attack, which is certainly not going to help the uh, tyrant increase their stats. All right, blue is next. He's also shooting at the lab rats, but they uh, hopefully will be safe. Just don't roll like a two. Oh, and that's exactly what he did. <laughs> oh, so this is bad. They're probably going to be defeated before they ever get a chance to uh, switch out, because the goblin bomber will hit them, potentially. And then the tipsy troll is going to come over here. And come on, just hurt yourself. Now you got tantrum for one. All right, going into round two, things look a little hairy. Let's uh, see what the Goblin Bomber does. Shooting at Tantrum first. Oh my gosh, a two? Yeah, with that, a loss seems pretty likely. Shooting at the Lab Rats. Oh my gosh, yes! <laughs> so he hurts himself one, and they survive, and she can uh, sub out after she takes her turn. All right, so with her two dexterity, she's going to roll her uh, skill die, which, remember, comes back because she's the one using it. And she's going to roll one attack. She's going to shoot at the Goblin Bomber. Remember, she can re-roll one of her unused dice. So if she doesn't hit, she can re-roll the attack. And if she uh, does hit, she can re-roll this to try to get healing for Tantrum. All right, so... Uh, she doesn't have to use that because it's her skill die, but she will re-roll... There we go. We got the attack, at least. So this guy is defeated. And he goes over here. So yes, we are going to increase the uh, Tyrant's targeting power. And now do we put the bone over there? We need to get to four to actually uh, get anything cool to happen. Ooh, actually, I could put it there and then use big bolts. Uh, place poison one effect dice on any two baddies. So that'd be one damage to each of these guys. That seems probably pretty important. And actually, that's right. This isn't even exhausted after using the bone. So she can get that uh, bog bolts ability and then still have the skill for the next guy to use. So she'll poison each of them and then she's definitely going to tag out. So even if she ends up dying in a second from the orc's shot, uh, Slank will still be able to come in and fight. Meanwhile, Tantrum's just going to try to go ham on this guy. I mean, should be able to kill him, right? All right, that's uh, two damage, so the poison will finish him off before he recovers. Awesome, and another bone. Now, unfortunately, even though Tantrum's got two bones, that only lets him influence his rage die, which doesn't matter. And also, unfortunately, the uh, troll's going to die from the poison, not from Tantrum, so he can't get a body count upgrade. All right, now the Orc Witness is going to shoot at Flan. And yes, she is down to zero health, but not a problem. Slank will be there in a second. And then the Orc, we can say what order these things happen in. So we'll have the Poison activate first, and he is dead. And there he goes. Oh, you know, I forgot to uh, deal the Poison damage. This guy's only got three life left. We go into round three. Things look pretty easy now. We'll put uh, Slank right there. And remember, Slank's dice are in the exact same spot that uh, Flan's were, so... He's got the same skill die. He's got three dexterity, one attack, one defense, and the healing. But who cares about defense? The orc is going to attack Tantrum anyway if he's still alive. So he'll move up one, do one attack, and the skill die. Remember, his uh, special innate is that he can't cause malfunctions and lose the die forever. 
All right, so one damage and a bone. Oh, holy crud, look at his one bone ability. Acquire a number one skill die, so he just gets us a level up. Well, yes, please, he's gonna get his own one, which can uh, deal true damage to adjacent enemies, or deal two damage to non-adjacent enemies, would make them go after him in initiative. And remember, even though this has the malfunction symbol, he just exhausts this because it's not his die. He doesn't lose it forever because he ignores malfunctions. All right, Tantrum's gonna run in, has uh, two dice left. Come on, hit this guy and kill him. Oh, no. So it's just one damage, and we're still one bone shy of anything meaningful. And this guy's attacking Tantrum. And just one damage, we're alive. Round four. All right, Slank's not gonna roll one attack, because I don't want to defeat the guy. I want to give Tantrum a chance to get more bones. So let's just roll one defense and his new skill die. And nice, okay, so we can get another one skill die, I guess. And we've got two to choose from, both of the lab rats we haven't earned yet. Now, this one's more focused on damage dealing and teleporting around the battlefield. This one's more focused on retaliating when you're attacked. I think I'll go for that one. All right, now it's Tantrum's go, and come on, Tantrum. If you can roll at least one bone, you can get an axe. Or no. <laughs> All right. But this guy is defeated. And the Orc Windus comes over here. This worked out pretty well. Uh, nobody gets anything for that. Uh, one attack is not higher than the Tyrant's two, so no. Three and two initiative are not higher than the Tyrant's four, so no. So the only thing that happens because of the Goblin Bomber is this advances once. So one more like that, and the Tyrant will target weak instead of strong. And we're getting another progress, uh, two training, and one loot each. All right, for Tantrum, we'll get one defense. And then one of my favorites for his first skill is Way of the Wild. That is a chance of uh, taking away a one or five point baddie's special abilities. Very nice. And for the Lab Rats, I think based on that battle, I gotta pump up defense. And now Slank can roll two and Flying can roll one. And we got a ton of skills, so let's actually uh, bump health up one more. So they each have five. And we get uh, two loot. Ooh, throwing axes. Tantrum already has those. I think the Lab Rats can have that. Uh, so you can roll an attack die, this is twice, uh, and deal its damage to any unit on the battle mat without spending dex. Very nice. So I guess Tantrum will have the mech pick, which will be nice if we get another trove loot. And for our resting, uh, clearly Flan will get back her five life, and Tantrum will get back the four uh, he was missing. All right, now on to day three, let's see our lab dice. We got two that'll add skills to the Tyrant. One that'll start upping his attack type to range, and one initiative. I'm not as worried about that. Now remember, if we have combat or peaceful, most likely the baddie key will just be a 5 and a 1, since it's day 3 times 2 gear locks. So we're really looking at this one being our worst, and then these just having one guy next to him. So with that in mind, I'll certainly put the initiative one there. And then uh, they have to get a bunch of these for it to actually matter. So let's uh, put that for the five. So I don't want to get his skills and then put the other two skills there. All right, here's our final encounter from our starting days. The Wingless Dragon. Toothless, missing an eye, and rarely clean. Carnival, or Carney for short, is one of the more interesting gear locks living in Obendar. He's also brilliant and perhaps insane. He's ventured to the banks of the Sibrin to build his latest game, the Wingless Dragon, a catapult to launch passerby over the Sibrin for a small fee, of course. Like most of his games, winning seems unlikely. Landing safely on the opposite shore seems impossible. But who knows? He swears it's safe or our money back, and his childlike smile hints that it might be fun. All right, so this is a non-combat one, so we're just going to randomly draw our baddies for upgrading our tyrant. And let's see, this one looks complicated, but we get a loot, whereas we don't here. But, oh, two training regardless, and a progress. All right, catapults and small fragile creatures, really? Place a stack of three health chips on baddie melee position four and baddie range position two. Each gear lock in the party will make an attempt to literally slide or flick an attack die between these two stacks, starting from gear lock range position three. The attack die must travel far enough to be completely between the chip stacks or beyond them for success. You may hit chip stacks in the process. Each gear lock may make two practice attempts. Any gear lock that comes up short begins the next battle with minus one hit points. Or there's no time for silly games. Carnival mocks your lack of bravery as you walk casually across the bridge. You feel intense regret. Okay, and we get success no matter what. I mean, we gotta go for this, right? It sounds like fun. All right, so melee position four and range position two. Oh my gosh, this is way tighter than I thought. And we're going from right here. <laughs> okay. If you don't listen to the podcast, you might not know that I am a terrible dexterity game. So I get a two practice attempts for each of them. So let's have the uh, lab rats go first, since if they lose life, I think it might be kind of not as bad. So two practice attempts. 
Okay, so does that count? <laughs> now it doesn't really specify flying dice. Okay, so that would not have been it. That was my second practice. Here we go. Oh, I'm gonna say that's a good one. That definitely went through, even though it hit the stack. So uh, the lab rats are okay. Come on, Tantrum, catapult yourself. So that's practice one, uh, practice two. All right, you got this, Tantrum, you got this. Yes, okay, I think that's good. I didn't say it had to stay on the mat, right? So we're getting a third progress, two training points, and a loot each, awesome. But first we draw our batty cue, and there's no choice here except in how the dice were laid out since we didn't uh, scout it all. So first we've got Wiser Golden Troll Ultra. I feel like it's good that he's not gonna do much. Uh, his initiative is not higher, and oh, he has melee attacks. We didn't even uh, affect that. And then a troll youngin. So certainly not higher initiative, and <laughs> the only skill he's given the boss is being careless. I love it. So you can see why this is quite a bit easier the shorter you play the campaign, because every day that goes on, you're not only boosting yourself and the bad EQ, but you're also boosting the tyrant. All right, for tantrums training, let's see. Cripple's nice because I can take away an attack die permanently from an enemy. Like a kobold protects me from a lot of damage. Like a wolf and like a worm can deal damage. Like a worm is poison, definitely nice. Or I could get some more rage. Well, first thing I think I want to get a dexterity up to five. And yeah, then since uh, Tantrum will basically be the front line in any melee based battle, let's uh, take like a kobold. So this will give me Hardy, the same thing that Kobold had before, where they uh, only take one damage per turn for either two or one turn, depending on what I roll. And as for the Lab Rats, I think I might want to level up the healing skill twice, because that is a big leap. I go from only having one side that heals to having three sides that heal. So 50% of the time, and don't forget, she can re-roll the die if she's the one using it. She can uh, heal one of us. That seems pretty powerful. So let's go for that for now. So again, how that works is I trade the number one in for the number two, and then I trade the number two in for the number three. And there is a sort of like super contraption I can trade a number three in, but it's only one time use, unlike these where I can uh, keep on using them if it's the right colored guy active. So I don't think I need this yet. And our loot from Catapult Man, infused incense. Roll two additional attack dice on your turn, does not cost dexterity, nice. And then fresh bog meat in battle, heal yourself for five, then add a poison two effect die to your gear lock. Let's put that on Tantrum, because uh, if the Lab Rats are poison, one of them uh, tags out, the poison stays. So I guess I'll give the Infused Incense to the Lab Rats, and now with that and Throwing Axe, they can do a ton of damage. All right, and for their recovery turn, I'm going to have the Lab Rats scout. We got a five. Let's look at the uh, number five on top. So he's got Signal 1, which means he'll add an extra one-point baddie. He's got Flight, which means every other turn he won't be targetable. He's got a fast enough initiative we won't be able to get to him before that. And then he's got Dive, which means he'll, uh, after he comes out of flight, he'll just move straight next to the weakest person to attack them. But he is just a melee guy. Huh. It could be worse. Yeah, you know what? Devil you know is better than the devil you don't. I'm going to keep him on top. Meanwhile, for Tantrum, in a short game like this, I think the mech pick will probably be useless, so I'm going to uh, try to trade in for a better item. So I roll six attack dice. For every bone I get, I get to draw another loot, and then I can keep one of the ones I've drawn, but if I roll no bones, I get nothing. Nice, uh, two. So prying iron, add two to an action die result during your lockpick. No lockpicking. Ah, we're fortunate discovery. Select one of your consumable skill dice and place it in a spot on your map available for use. There we go. So Tantrum's got a choice. I can either raise his axes to three, or get the Horn of the Zerker, which will either give me uh, bones I can use over and over again without exhausting it, or put us all to the front of initiative, basically giving us a free turn potentially, or stun, skipping the turn of every single baddie five or less. Yeah, the horn sounds fun. All right, so now we advance to day four out of eight with uh, three out of six progress. You got four dice, a double health, a skill, another targeting one, which would get the tyrant to target the weakest. So the only guy I know about is this guy, and Good lord, I cannot have him get the skill, but the thing is I probably won't kill him first. I think I should be able to make it happen so that I kill him second or third. Wait, what's my Q going to be? It's a four times two. So that'd be eight, which means, oh, if I get a uh, non-battle encounter, he will be first. So let's put the skill down here as far from him as possible, and I just have to kill him first or second. Yeah, and the targeting thing, I mean, probably anyone is going to make it worse at this point, so let's kind of do it like that and see how it goes. Oh, we get to our first tyrant encounter, Ranger Danger. This trapper's path through the woods has been a kind one until today, when a keen gearlock eye spotted a scout scurrying away through the underbrush. 
Staying on this route will be easier, but the tyrant is likely now expecting us to come this way. Leaving the path and approaching from another direction will be much more open to danger, but it may still provide the element of surprise. Okay, let's see. Approach unseen from the west. We would add two one-point baddies to the bottom of the queue. So what would that be? That would be uh, ten. So we'd have five one-point baddies and a five-point baddie. Oh, and then they all have surprise, so they would all go before us. And if we lose, we get the negative thing anyway. I think I'll just approach boldly from the south. That means we just fight the normal number of baddie queues, and uh, this stays around with the tyrant. It means now he'll be on the bottom of the baddie queue instead of the top. But, you know, I like to kill all of his minions anyway, so that might be okay. Ooh, and two training and a loot. I uh, like that, so let's go for it. So I'm putting out uh, three one-point baddies and our griffin howler. And remember, we really, really want to kill that guy first or second. He's got five initiative. And we've got a hardy kobold green thumb, one attack, not really worried about him at all. A goblin sandbagger with mischief again, but only on a bone and a tantrum and slanker tied for health. So I might just be able to have him attack the lab rats and not steal tantrum's rage again. Oh and gosh, he's only got two life. I can probably just kill him straight up anyway. Finally, an owl bear cub. Oh, I do not like inspire here. But Blind Strike 1 is not nearly as bad. At the start of his turn, he's going to deal uh, one true damage to the adjacent unit with the most health. So he's going to hit uh, the Kobold, I think, right? Yeah, because he goes before him. Now, quick thing to note. Hardy would clearly be horrific on the Tyrant. Anybody who's fought uh, Gendrix from the core box will know what I mean. But the nice thing is, when you have two guys next to the skill die, you can pick which one as long as their point value is the same. So if, for example, I get uh, the Hardy guy and the Mischief guy next to each other, I can pick to give the boss Mischief instead of Hardy. So I'm going to say taking this guy out and trying to take him out are most important. And if I get really lucky, Tantrum will roll a 5 for initiative and be able to use a Wave of the Wild on this guy and take away all his abilities, maybe. Or no, he's going after everyone. <laughs> Great. So let's see, I think I'm going to start with a Slank in instead of Flan. Actually, you know what? I won't, because I want Flan to be able to do a range attack and take out that uh, goblin guy. So I'll put Flan back here, a tantrum here, I guess. And just hope he doesn't get killed by both these guys attacking him. But right, so first is our annoying guy. He's going to attack tantrum for three. Please miss or don't get doubles. Oh, that's awesome! So there's two damage. That means tantrum's rage goes up to 1.4. Uh, but now this guy is flying, and I forgot his signal would have triggered at the start of his turn, but it only does it for round one. We have a, a one-point baddie hanging out when we defeat somebody. Our next is our Albert Cub. He hits the Kobold for one, and then he does have melee, so he runs over to try to fight Tantrum, but has no attack. All he's doing is a blind strike. And then here's why I did this. Uh, it's going to work out well. Inspire means that he has the next person go immediately. And they'll have plus one attack die, but that just means this guy runs over here. So he'll be out of action for at least a couple turns. And if Tantrum moves out of the way, then the Owlbear will uh, hit the Kobold again. All right, now it's the Lab Rats. Uh, let's take out this Goblin Sandbagger before he can do anything else. Now, since Flan can reroll a dice, I'm going to have her do one attack against the Goblin. And then she can uh, reroll it if it misses, and then use the Throwing Axis for an extra attack die if she needs it. And then also try to uh, heal Tantrum away from death. All right. I'll take both of those. I don't think I want to reroll either of them. So I'll heal Tantrum twice, but remember it doesn't get exhausted. And she does the one damage to that guy. And now she'll use one of the two uses of the throwing axes to do an attack on him again. There we go. He is done. Which means he's going over there. Uh, not going to do too much. And now it's uh, Tantrum's turn, but he doesn't have a lot to do. Because don't forget, we definitely want to defeat that bird second, and he can't be targeted right now. So with that in mind, uh, Tantrum's going to move over one. He's got four decks left. He'll roll like a Kobold, his one defense, and I guess just not use the other two. Oh, I know. He can roll his uh, horn and see if he gets the one bone that he can reuse. So wasting one dex, but that's okay for now. Oh, awesome. So he's going to be hardy for the next uh, two rounds, which means he can only take one damage per turn, even from three attack, uh, you know, bird thing over there. And he's got a defense. He did get exactly what I wanted, the reusable bone. So once he uses that, it just goes back to his available skill slot. All right, round two, we got a new guy coming in. And we got the troubled troll, <laughs> the troubled troll bold again. And he's got daze, which means his target can't move on their next turn. And since he's not a 20 point baddie or a tyrant, he's going down to the bottom. All right, so first is our Griffin Howler. He wants to go adjacent to with Dive, the uh, weakest unit, but luckily we can choose because they both have five. So he's going next to Tantrum and blocking up other people. And he will no longer be flying. He is still rolling three attack. 
Oh man, that would have been bad. But the one defense meant Hardy means Tantrum only takes one damage. Which boosts his rage to give him three bones, or if I push, I can auto-kill a one guy? I think I want the bones. Okay, next is our angry owlbear. He's gonna do, oh nice, one to the strongest guy, the griffin, love that. Then he's gonna move over here. The next is the kobold, but he has no way to get to anybody, so he does not move in that case. And so the lab rats are up, and then tantrum. And she's just gotta help uh, finish off this guy, so she'll do uh, two attack against him. I'm not using her skill this turn. Okay, let's reroll the bone. There we go, two damage. So down to two life. And you know, it might be a little silly, but I think she's going to actually uh, tap out. That means the blind strike will never hit her because she'll be gone before the owlbear gets a chance to uh, attack her. All right, and Tantrum is next, and I do think I'm just gonna put uh, three bones over here. Uh, worst case, I can get Axe Collector to get three axes. One more will let me recoup to heal, though I probably won't need that. And two more will unlock my innate plus one. Which isn't that great, it just means if uh, Tantrum's Rage Die gets to the highest value, it just won't ever go back down to 1.0. Oh, and uh, the Hardy does count down to 1. And Tantrum's gonna go all out, a uh, Wave of the Wild, 3 attack dice, and a shield. I'm not expecting to use Wave of the Wild, but hey, if I somehow miss killing the Griffin, that'll disable its powers, or at least get me a bone. I only need 2 damage, so I'm not too worried. Oh, here we go. So that's 2 bones, definitely enough damage, and a shield. And that gets Tantrum his sixth bone, so he is upgraded and gets rid of them all. And this guy is gone. Second monster kill, just like we wanted. Now this guy is going to daze Tantrum. And let's see. So the one damage is stopped by Tantrum's shield, but this guy does have a shield hanging out. All right, we go into round three. But actually, at the end of the round, she taps out. We get our boy Slank in. So let's see, if he goes here, he won't get hit by the blind strike. Although I guess either way he's going to get attacked by this guy with plus one attack from the inspiration. It's a green is first, no blind strike, and then uh, I guess he can move. I guess I really want him here so that I can uh, gang up on him. And then he inspires this guy, so two attack dice on Slank right as he comes in. Two damage. Remember, Slank's got a one attack, two defense, three dexterity. I honestly think I need to kind of save up bones to try to get a third guy because I need to upgrade my dexterity or my attack. So let's go and roll both his defense and one of his skill dice. I've got as the highest chance for bones. We'll do his since he can reuse it. Because I'm pretty sure Tantrum can defeat that guy by himself. All right. Hey, there we go. Two bones and uh, one defense. Nice. See, for two bones, I could immediately set the round counter to the fatigue round. That's cool. Three bones, place a stun effect die on any five point or less baddie, but also nice. As for Tantrum, he can't move. His uh, kobold power is exhausted. So he's just going to do three attack uh, on the owlbear cub, one defense, and his horn now that it's back. Okay, I'll take that. I defeated this guy. I'm not going to use the horn because I just wanted the uh, reusable stuff. And this is nice. This guy's only got three life, so three plus five is eight, which means that he won't boost the tyrant's health. All right, the daze goes away, although this guy's going to attack me again and put it right back. He's already got a defense, so just an attack, and he missed. He doesn't have anything on a miss, so that was it. All right, round four, again, kind of close to fatigue. Okay, this guy attacks, but only with one attack this time, and he's got a defense, so should be fine. Ooh, or uh, one gets through. Down to two life. So I'll go ahead and have him just use uh, two defense and one attack. We'll try to start plinking this guy down, but uh, also try to get some more bones for me. Or no bones, darn it. But at least that guy's hurt. And Tantrum's going to attack this guy, use his horn and one defense again. Ooh, a five and a reusable bone. And a shield uh, that he doesn't need. I think the five is a straight up kill even with the descents. Yes, it is. And nice, that uh, daze gives me a much better skill choice to uh, pick. Because blind strike and inspire would have been pretty annoying on the boss. All right, so just one guy left going into round five right before fatigue. He's going to attack Slank, who's got two defense, so totally fine. But Slank's actually going to throw away one of his defense. Slank's still looking for those last two bones, so he's going to roll uh, both of his skill dice. Remember, he can't malfunction and lose them, and one defense. Come on. Ah, oh, we got one. So this is a force field. I could put it on somebody with a negative status effect, and they would lose it, and it would also prevent the next one they get, but that's not worthwhile right now. And one defense I also don't want. Unfortunately, there's no way for him to get another uh, bone, is there? Because yeah, if we go into the fatigue round, the guy will die immediately, so we'll never get another chance. So I guess he'll go ahead and just uh, spend one and get the last number one skill die, which is the bonus damage one, remember? And then can Tantrum get over there to avoid the fatigue? One, two, three, four, <laughs> and then just one attack die? 
Here we go, Tantrum. Do it. Yeah, you did it. And since the lab's already full, this guy doesn't even get placed. All right, so let's see. They both have a better targeting. So the boss will now attack the weakest. Neither of the health ones go off because six is less than eight and eight is equal to eight. They don't exceed him. And I'll give him daze instead of blind strike and inspire one. So he's looking pretty trollish so far, careless and dazing. And I'm getting two training, a loot each and a progress, but don't forget this is gonna hang out with the tyrant and make him go to the bottom of the queue in the fight. Let's see, for tantrums two, I think one more health just to make a turn one kill less likely seems good. And let's uh, rage up, cause auto killing a five point baddie sounds nice. These guys still can't get dexterity or attack. So I guess for now let's bump uh, maybe his die up to the highest level since he's the other one I have. Yeah, so now I can do like one or two or even three damage pretty consistently, not bad. But man, I need some more dexterity. Looking at our loot, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? <laughs> These are my two favorite defensive items and I got both of them? Now they're each heavy, which means I can only hold one other item. But yeah, one's rolling your defense, maybe upgraded to two defense, and bones can be converted to one, or just add one defense to your roll each turn. I think they have a better chance of getting more defense, so let's give the raider armor to them. And I'll keep the infused incense for plus two attack over the throwing axe for a one time one attack die. And then Tantrum can give up the signet, uh, keep his bog meat, and get the buckler. So that'll be a two defense most turns for him. And Slank will certainly be recovering since he was down to two life. Tantrum's only off one though, so I think uh, he'll go in and scout. I would only level one. This one doesn't bother me much at all. Uh, yeah, and Golf can hit everyone adjacent, but that could work in my favor. One attack, three life, not really a big deal. All right, we just need two more progress going into day five. Let's see what the lab is cooking. Oh, so this one actually unlocks a tyrant die. And that probably still won't fire off. So let's assume I'm gonna kill the most dangerous person first or second and put the attack one down here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, this is day five, which means we should just fight two five-point baddies. So probably one of them won't exceed two attack if I'm lucky. And this is nice, because gaining the tyrant die happens automatically whatever uh, baddie we happen to have. But if I put it down here and we get two fives, we should never even deal with it. And this one's definitely going there because, again, uh, that's usually only on 20-point baddies. So good roll for me. We got another Tyrant one. Smoke on the horizon. While there's still plenty of ground to cover today, a steady stream of mechs all headed to the same place is suspicious enough to give pause. A short climb up a nearby bluff and a bit of careful observation creates further suspicion. The smoke coming from the horizon confirms that something questionable is going on. A facility barely visible in the distance appears to be the source. Further investigation is a given, so now the only question is the approach. A relentless travel pace would give time to scout the area and calculate a precision strike on the facility. However, a more casual pace may yield better resources. One jump ahead of the mech line. Persistent. Before tyrant battle, each gear like my scout the area up to two times. That's pretty nice. Or let's not be too hasty. Persistent, round up the baddie queue in the tyrant battle to the nearest 10 points. If we get an extra training, we get one if we win regardless. Or no, wait, these aren't even combats. This is just a uh, non-combat encounter. So, hmm. If I get a progress now, I'll need one more before I can fight. So I'll probably be fighting the tyrant on day seven, which would be seven times two, 14. Surrounding 14 to 20? Ugh, it sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> So yeah, even though I would love the extra training and the loot, let's go for this one. So I'm just getting one training and one progress, not too bad. I think I gotta get my uh, poison like a worm. I just love putting that on the tyrant. For these guys, dang it, more leveling up without getting anything? I don't know. Let's put their health to the highest value. These can only go up to uh, three, so they will never level their health again. But man, are they tanky. Six life, then they can switch out and take six life again. And let's not forget this, just two random fives off the top of the stack. Okay, a troll brewmaster and a kobold fanatic. He looks pretty nasty. So neither of them have that, as I suspected. Oh, but he does have three attack, which means the boss's attack will go up by one as well. Now, this guy is not of higher initiative, so he's staying at four initiative. And like we planned, uh, no tyrants die, yes. And they're both going to scout. Uh, Lab rats can look at a five, definitely will. Hmm, troll sage. I want the boss to get thick skin, but two attack is not bad at all. Inspire one only on a bone. Yeah, I can handle him. Okay, and then tantrum scouting. Oh, nice. Uh, I guess we'll look at two fives. Wow, poison three. Oh, but he's melee. He has no actual attack. He's slow. And this die can heal and then cancel status effects that would happen. So yeah, actually, this guy shouldn't be too bad. Let's keep both of them. 
Right, going to day six, potentially our penultimate day, which means it might be the last time we build up the Tyrant. Let's see what we get. Oh, two attack. That one's fine, because he's not even close to having range attack, and health, I don't really care if he gets one more, so the attack is what worries me. All right, now we know most of the Q this time, and it is nice. Zero attack, two attack, and one attack. Currently, no combination of any two of them would get above the boss's three. And I'm pretty sure all my efforts are going to be on killing this guy first. So since he has no attack, let's go ahead and do that. And then again, the range, I don't care much. Though there is a pretty good chance I'll kill a level one before I kill the other level five, so that should work. Impenetrable skin routine. The room is hidden in the back of the inn, completely out of sight. The shifty behavior of the innkeeper is a dead giveaway that something is amiss. A giant sieve sifts... sieve? Whatever, sifts a flaky substance into a tyrant vat, turning the liquid inside a sickening green. Like the dandruff of a divine being, one of the flakes whisks away from its intended destination and lands on the ground. Though it appears as if it should crunch upon contact, it actually holds firm under pressure, even when stepped on. A tube in the back of the room reads, Extract of Nam. Any tyrant with this in their system will be hard to exhaust. Flakes for the Memories. Place a stack of number of hit points equal to party size, that'd be two, nom flakes, on each melee baddie starting position. Baddie cues, baddie points. Party treats nom flakes as opposing units. All nom flakes must be defeated before any baddies may be targeted. Now the question is, can the baddies move past the nom flakes? Because if not, most of my enemies are melee, that wouldn't be too bad. Or fear today, nom tomorrow. Uh, baddie cues as baddie points, but persistent, the tyrant battle starts in the fatigue rounds. Oh man, and don't forget the guy's gonna be on the bottom now because of the other card we got, which means uh, we have to survive for a while taking a lot of damage. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna go for the flakes, and I mean, I'm gonna treat them as units. I don't see how I couldn't, otherwise, they would just be like hit points sitting under enemies, and you couldn't even tell. So we've got the two fives we know about, then the dragon, then somebody else. And who's our unknown boy? Another new one Swampkin Monkey. Two attack for level one, but only two life. Stubborn and flea, and good, also melee. So stubborn means if he's defeated, he takes a turn afterwards. Flea means at the end of round two or five, he's going to run away and steal a loot from the closest gear lock, which uh, isn't too bad as long as I don't give him my armors. Now let's see where our initiative ends up. Uh, both fours. Okay, so we're just not faster than the dragon. And we'll certainly start out with uh, Slank and Tantrum. I guess something like that might be okay. Or actually, maybe... We'll do that, and then they can both shift over after they defeat the first one. Because if a dragon's first, he's going to attack Tantrum, because Tantrum has less life. And just does one damage. We'll raise Rage to 1.2. Then Golf means it's also going to hit this guy for one. All right, so Labrats are next. He'll use his skill. One defense and one attack, targeting that guy, of course. All right. So this can hit any unit that's not adjacent to me for this much damage, and then their initiative die moves to right after mine. But the one attack can do this. I know, you know what I just realized? This is not a targeted effect. So I can actually hit any of these guys for two and then uh, move them to after me on the initiative track and won't be affected by the flakes not letting me target them. So I'm definitely going to use this. Remember, he doesn't exhaust it because it's his. And I think I'll hit the dragon hatchling. Gets it down to one life left. And it'll move to after us in initiative, which means we'll get a chance to kill it before it can attack again. All right, Tantrum's next. The thing in front only has one life. So two defense, uh, one from the shield, one from his regular defense. The horn, one attack, and what the hey, another attack. All right, so we do get the reasonable bone, plus another one and one defense, nice. Two attack, we'll defeat this guy. Oh man, I'm sure that he defeated somebody last battle. I don't remember how many there, let's just say one. I'll take that up to two, because that was an opposing baddie technically. And the attack raises him to 1.4 rage. All right, yellow already went. Uh, this guy inspires Gream. It doesn't matter. He can't do anything. Okay, none of them can do anything. We just go into round two. And he's certainly going to do the exact same thing he just did. Oh, awesome. Two bones, although I didn't get my uh, cool skill. And I will defeat this one. Ah, which means that guy can come out and poison me. Still, that means uh, one more and we get another guy finally. Yay. Let's see. I guess Tantrum will move to here, here. No, we don't want to get uh, him in golf, so yeah, we'll do that. And I'll roll three attack dice and one defense. Okay, nice. That's a third bone. The attack's enough to take this out. 
So I think that gets him another body count. So he's got two defense now. He's only one away from upgrading his rage. So now the dragon's going to attack him, and oh, it'll kill itself! Yay! Because engulf will hit everybody adjacent. <laughs> nice job. So one defense, and the dragon is dead. And good. It's just one attack, so nothing worries him here. Nobody has higher than two attacks, so these cannot hurt us. But this guy certainly can. Let's see, I'd rather leave myself options, so let's go there. He's going to do two attack and one defense. Ah, and he did get a bone to inspire, although uh, he didn't actually hurt Tantrum, so that's okay. So it means this guy will immediately act, and he will have one attack from the Inspire 1, plus his Poison 3, plus Dazing. Yikes. So he can go here. Oh, that means he can't get over there. Jeez. All right, and... Oh, my gosh. I mean, that's cool. Unfortunately, he's still poisoned and dazed. And now that force field would be really nice. All right, and this guy... I guess he just goes here. Now, he's about to flee and steal an item from a Tantrum. The thing I'm not sure about is... I'm assuming they meant Stubborn, because Fleet counts as him being defeated, so I think he gets an extra turn when he does that. So at the end of round two, he's running away. He's stealing Tantrum's bog meat. And he's coming right up here to attack on Tantrum, who has no defense left. Oh, wow, that was a ridiculous roll. Because it hurts Tantrum 1, which gets him to where he can exactly upgrade his uh, Rage if he wants. Okay, then this guy is defeated. And good, he's got super low life, so uh, we might upgrade the boss's life, depending on who we attack next. All right, so into round three, only the two tough guys left. The lab rat takes three damage, and the really nasty thing is, don't forget, if he subs out at the end of this round, Flan will still have the poison on her. All right, so I think he needs to roll this. This is a little bit of a teleporter. You can move to any space on the battle mat and then choose a new target, which would avoid Daze's uh, restriction on moving specifically. And I think he also needs to uh, use this to try to get rid of the poison. No, but I just realized he actually can't roll an attack die because right now that's the only guy he can target. So I guess that's it. Let's see how it goes. Oh, okay. So we got the bones we need to get another guy and we can teleport, but then we can't hit anything. All right, the important part is we're getting the uh, new character. So I guess I actually won't use this because it would exhaust it. And I won't use this one because it would also exhaust it. I'll just use V1 defense to get the fourth. And for my new person, I can either get Gerbil, who's mainly a damage dealer, or Helix, who has a bit more life. I think I want Gerbil. And this is kind of the most important thing to me, that I can finally uh, start upgrading a uh, Dexterity or Attack. And by the way, maybe most important in this battle, she immediately pops up with her full six life, so I can sub her in. Speaking of, I am going to sub him out, because I don't see any way he survives the three poison damage. All right, let's see. Tantrum could run over there. Uh, but we'll be able to get the uh, lab rat on it. Let's do like a kobold and like a worm. Like a worm will let me put uh, poison on the troll because it's not actually targeting him. And let's upgrade my rage to 2.0. So it's only four dice and only three of my dexterity. So I guess I could move twice. Yeah, no harm in that, I suppose. Right, let's see if any of these work. Oh my gosh. Ton of defense and hardy. Well, I don't need it with that probably. And I can get an axe. No, I think I want poison. All right, this guy's attacking me again. All right, so no inspiration this time. He does get a shield, and he'll take away uh, two of mine. So this guy's just going to roll one defense. <laughs> Nothing again. But he does increase the poison to three again, and days, which will apply to whichever uh, noob person I bring in. So end of the round, we're advancing to four, and this guy's out. I think we're going to bring in Gerbil, who's melee, so we'll put her right there. She's got three dexterity, uh, two attack. She can boost her damage with uh, her die. And her backup plans let her deal automatic damage, let her bleed people, let her uh, tap out for another uh, guy automatically, which is really cool. And another cool thing, she gets a bone each time a baddie is defeated, which could help us get our fourth guy. But the not so great part, she immediately takes uh, three damage from the poison. And she'll go to roll two attack dice and uh, use her one special die to try to get rid of that. All right, so she does, and then she can uh, teleport if she wants to. And sure, big thing is I don't want uh, Tantrum to get poisoned, so let's put her there. But that doesn't use the die, because it's hers. All right, now Tantrum has to murder Fi this guy. Although, oh, wait. You know what, hold on, let's not teleport her there, because I just realized uh, if he runs away, then the Troll Sage will potentially finish her off. So let's teleport her there, and then we can move Tantrum over one. I guess it's hard he didn't do anything. We'll try to get like a worm again, and three attack. He still got the defense. Oh, wait, I can use Way of the Wild and take away that guy's poison, so forget about like a worm for a second. Well, or let's get rid of one of my attacks. All right, come on. 
There we go. So this guy is not poisoning anybody anymore. In fact, he can't do anything except roll a defense die. Two damage to him. When the troll attacks me, I'm going to hit him with a poison two. And the boost tantrum up to 2.2. Nice. All right, so the troll does come over. Just rolling two attack dice. Oh, one actually gets through. Tantrum's down to two life. Oh, actually, you know what? I should have gotten a free defense even on that roll. I'm not restricted by my max. So hold on. So now Tantrum does not go down one life. And this guy just hangs out and rolls his defense. <laughs> he cannot roll one to save his life. Oh, but we are going to go into a fatigue round. She's down to one poison, but only one life. She's not dazed. I think I'm going to switch her out for the healer, and then she can use her healing power over and over because the uh, healing can even go to the ones out of battle. Because the thing is, I can only heal one of them fully, which means if I fight the tyrant tomorrow, I'll be in a bad way health-wise. So yeah, she is going to pop out after this turn. But she'll go ahead and roll her skill and two attack against the guy next to her. So two damage and a bone. I'll take that. Tantrum, I think, is going to pound on that troll sage. He doesn't really have any skills left, so I'll just get uh, my defense from my shield, my regular defense, and three attack dice. Oh, I got a ton of defense. Oh, and nice! I can get Axe Collector. I was definitely hoping for that. Two actual damage. I'll just take away his shield. The other one's stopped by his thick skin, so no damage gets through. But I'm going to trade in all four bones for Axe Collector to go up to three, ready for the Tyrant fight. Loving that. I'm up to 2.4. Still can't quite auto-kill a level 5. Okay, the troll will take 2 damage from the poison, then it goes down to 1. He's back to rolling all 3 dice. Okay, so Tantrum's not hurt at all, of course. And this guy, again, didn't get inspired, so he's just hanging out. She's gonna switch out, which is good, because Fatigue was about to kill her. And we've got only Flan left. Alright, we go into our first Fatigue round. Tantrum's down 1. So is everybody else. Flan, of course, only has 2 dexterity, yikes. She doesn't need any defense. And the big thing is she wants to use her healing ability. I don't want to malfunction any of the other stuff. So she'll do a heal and an attack, I guess. All right, so that would uh, get rid of... Oh, sorry, she's already right, taken a damage from the poison. So yeah, that would get rid of all negative status effects on somebody and then uh, cancel the next two. That would have been great earlier, but I wanted a healing, so I'm not going to use it. And then one damage. Oh, I didn't say on who. I guess uh, on uh, the... No. The troll, I knew I wouldn't even hurt because of the thick skin, so I should have said I'm targeting that guy. And Tantrum's going ham on this guy. Oh, or he's getting a lot of bones, really? But three damage, so that's one. Thick skin, two. Three, so he's down to two. That's just one shy of his uh, poison killing him for me. So, hmm, my rage just went to 2.6. I could use a bone to get angry, but it's 2.8 and auto-kill either of those guys. See, I don't want to take a chance of him hurting me, so let's go ahead and do that for him. So it gets body count to four, which will be great against the Tyrant. Oh, I'm silly. I forgot I could have used the horn. Let's uh, go ahead and add that in. Okay. Not going to make a difference, but uh, cool that I got a bone. And this guy does nothing, so we do go to another fatigue round. And he dies immediately. And that means I don't get to heal. Uh, the lab rats are not going to be nearly as useful now. All right, if I'm going to try to attack the Tyrant, let's see how he upgrades. So three attack, not enough. One attack, not enough. He will not upgrade range, so that wouldn't have mattered because he wasn't far enough anyway. And eight life, not enough. Awesome. That means if I fought the Tyrant right now, he'd have eight life, one defense, three attack. That's not great. Four initiatives, so pretty slow. Although I guess he'd be at the bottom of the batty queue, so he'd come in at the uh, top of the initiative anyway. And he's careless and can daze us. I mean, that's not too nasty. Well, let's do our rewards. We're not giving him any bonus permanently. We got one progress, which is all we needed. We got two trainings and loot. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about the two trainings for them. We need some dexterity to actually use our cool stuff. But for Tantrum, hmm. Could get another dexterity, although it would probably be wasted after the first few rounds. Could try to get another defense, although I don't have much active spots for it. Could try for another attack. Cripple would be nice if I got it on the boss. Minus one attack for the entire battle. You know, let's do that. And then sure, let's uh, go to six dexterity. Maybe I should have gone for health, but it's okay. And we got a fortunate discovery. Oh, I can give it to... Oh, wait, no, they can't fit in their skill die. Darn it. Or on your turn, unexhaust any one die. I think a tantrum can take that. Yeah, I can't fortunate discovery, another horn. My axes are at full and you can't do it on body count. I could get one for them and then I'll throw one of the skill dice we have. Ooh, rejuvenator. It can heal all of my lab rats for two. We're going to let a tagged out guy tag back in. I care more about that. So heck yes, I'm getting a rejuvenator, and let's get rid of the one that none of us are aligned with, which is... 
uh, that one. All right, there we go. My tantrum will clearly heal back to six life. And sadly, I mean, look, it's three, three, and one. So I guess I'm gonna heal Gerbil. She's back to six, and then hopefully that Rejuvenator, if I start Gerbil out as our first active one, the Rejuvenator can heal the other two. All right, so we're going to day seven, but we are here. So now I'm gonna roll the lab dice. It's time to fight this guy. And there's nothing too interesting on the special Tyrant battle. You just build a baddie queue. The key thing is the persistent cards. So don't forget he's gonna be on the bottom of the baddie queue. But also, before we fight him, we each get to scout twice, which is good, because currently we don't know anything about who we might fight. All right, so he's on the bottom. And then it's day seven, so we're going to have two fives and four ones. We've got to deal with a lot of people before we get to him. So let's get some scouting done. Uh, so that's a five. <laughs> Engulf, weaken two, two attack, two defense, seven life. No, thank you. All right, second of four. Okay, five again. Stout means his last health can only be removed by fatigue. But here's the thing. If Tantrum hits him with Wave of the Wild successfully, he's only a four life level five. So yeah, we'll keep him. Okay, third. Nice, we can do another level five. So signal three means he would bring in an extra level one to the queue for three rounds in a row. He's pretty weak. Ah, oh, but he's so fast and he can get two defense dice. Now let's get rid of him. There's already going to be a battle of attrition. I want to make it more so. Okay, and finally just a level one. Are you kidding me? Get out of here, guy who steals my rage. I don't want you. All right, so the only thing I know in the queue is the uh, sonar troll is on top of it. When, of course, our friendly tyrant who's on the bottom. All right, the sonar trolls back there were pretty slow. Oh, geez, another stout guy? Now he does have treasure, which means when we defeat him, we get this loot die that could heal us or get us items. But, I mean, he is a tough guy. I'm not happy about this. Okay, now our first two level ones. We got a little dire wolf pup with lashback. Yeah, he's not scary. Finally, a cruddy troll with careless. Lovely. And something I really like, uh, nobody's initiative is above three. So we're both going to go first no matter what, I think. Yep. All right, so Tantrum's going to run up to that guy and try to take him out real quick. And then Gerbil can be... I guess here to start hitting that guy and distracting him from Tantrum. All right, now I'm going to use a dexterity move up, but before I do, I'm going to use one of my axes to do two damage to that guy. One will be canceled by his thick skin, but that leaves him with only three and no more thick skin for this turn. So if I can get three damage and uh, take away his special powers, he'll be done. Okay, here we go. All right, so I did not get any defense. I guess I can use that to get angry or something, but I did take away his powers and kill him, so that's good at least. So we'll get one of those level ones in in a second. Yeah, I think I will get the horn right back and get angry up to 1.4. I don't want to uh, <laughs> not be using that next turn. And I'll also use my utility parts to get my way of the wild back. If I can put that on the other guy, that'll be amazing. And as for Gerbil, she'll certainly use her special die. Two attack, one defense. She's got one dexterity left. Oh, I know, I can use uh, this one to try to heal all my gear locks. Since she's targeting the guy in front of her, of course. Ooh, I might actually get my uh, <laughs> last guy. So I did heal everybody for two. That would have healed everybody on the entire board, but I'm okay with just getting both of these guys back up to almost full. Two damage, so I only hit this guy for one after the thick skin. And three bones. You know, as much as I want another guy, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, two of them. So that'll poison him for damage getting past his uh, thick skin every turn. Now she didn't get any defense, so that's not great. All right, he's first, he takes a damage from the bleeding. Let's see, who do I want him to attack? Tantrum needs to take Two more to upgrade his rage, so between the two he'd probably take three. So I guess I'll have him attack her. Oh my gosh, three damage and a shield? He's looking a lot weaker. Oh, you know, I forgot, my raider armor can upgrade a bone to a defense. I'll do that next time. Okay, the pup just hits Tantrum for one. What is going on? All right, well, at least uh, Tantrum's right where he wants in terms of rage. And this guy will come down and hopefully roll a bone and hurt himself. Or one. Yikes. All right, going into round two. We got another dire wolf pup. That's okay. Let's see, he'll be over there, so not doing anything for the moment. All right, so Tantrum is first going to upgrade Rage. I guess he'll do his horn again. Three attack. Wave the wild, trying to get that five next to him. Two defense, but one of those is free. That is six, though, so that's all of his dexterity. And yeah, he'll try to attack the guy next to him, since uh, Wave the wild can take out his specials. Oh my gosh. Okay, so he did take out his special abilities. Yeah, that is a lot of bones. Once again, barely any defense. So two, uh, the thick skin doesn't apply anymore, so he just takes uh, one damage after the defense goes. Let's see, I could get angry. I could throw an axe and then get myself back to three. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Let's uh, take this pup down. Oh, darn it, Tantrum killed somebody again, so he's got a uh, five healing ready for him. 
Right, I'll actually wait on my four bones until I use my last axe in a second. This guy's got five life left. So if she can hit him for four, which seems unlikely, the bleeding will finish him off. Let's see, two attack, one defense, and her special dam will hold off on those. Well, that's right, she can do an automatic damage with swipe left if she uh, gets close to killing him. So here we go. Okay, so that's plus one damage to an attack, so that would be three damage and another bone. And three is not enough, so she will use one bone to swipe left on him. And that's just a true damage, so that's another one. So he'll die from the bleeding when he acts. But I think she's still got to run away because she doesn't have any defense. So actually, she might not need to run away this turn. Yeah, I think she can hang out one more turn because uh, I can use that, uh, turn it to a shield with the raid armor. So she has one armor and two health. Unless, like, one of these two guys gets a double hit, she should be okay, hopefully. All right, so he dies from the bleeding. Puppy's attacking Tantrum. Uh, one. Just takes away his uh, armor. And then, yes, he does want to attack her. Uh, sorry, the trolls first. Okay, one damage. That takes her armor. And the puppy. Okay, so she is alive. Whew. All right, we're going into round three, and we got our last person before the boss. Decoy two and engulf. And this guy's an annoying friend. He's only got one life, but when we kill him, a decoy goes in his place with two life. And until we kill it, we can't attack any other baddies. So I'm thinking I might just let him hang around. Especially with his engulf hurting other people. All right, let's have Tantrum. One, two, three, four. I'm actually going to have him move all the way over here, I think. Then he's going to throw his last axe to finish off this wolf. That way the last back doesn't hurt me. Then I'll use all four of his bones to get back to three axes. Now he's still got two dexterity left. I'll use one for a shield for sure. And one to attack this little guy. All right, so we actually got passive thick skin. Nice job. And definitely like in three defense. Gets him to 2.4. I guess the uh, two point doesn't matter as much now. I might just use the three healing in a second. All right, Lab Rat's nice. She can run away in a second, but she should be able to defeat this guy first. So she uses her special, two attack, one defense, wasting one dexterity. Okay, that's plus one attack, so she'll definitely kill the troll next to her. And then she can make somebody bleed, or she can do a true damage. That's yeah, not going to help with anybody. So that won't get exhausted, but he is done. And then she's going inactive, of course, right before this guy comes over. Huh. If he misses, this guy would shoot her and then engulf him. So sure, I'll move him there just in case that happens. His attack on her. Uh, he does hit. Oh, darn it. I could have turned this into a shield. <laughs> Let's say I did that. Keep on forgetting my silly raider armor. Okay, so now he'll attack her. He can defeat her, but at least he'll hit the wolf, too. Wait, you know what? Let's rewind that back, because then uh, he'll lash back on that guy, which will kill him and make the decoy and won't be able to attack anybody. So never mind. Uh, he'll hit her and do one to him. So she is out. So we're going to round four, and my created tyrant is here. I'll go ahead and put my healer out this turn, if only because then the tyrant can't reach us. Because remember, he jumps to the top of the queue. Actually, no, she needs to be here, doesn't she? All right, so then uh, he'll go... Like that. Tantrum will uh, throw an axe. Should I hit him or kill this guy? I think I should hit him. <laughs> oh, I didn't roll for his defense. So hold on, that might change things. Yeah, so he got one. But yeah, I'll still throw the axe at him and get him down to seven. Okay, and then one. So let's see, I've got five dexterity. Let's go for three attack. My free defense. A cripple and like a worm. That all sounds good. A little bit of damage. Good, he is down a attack, and if he hits me, he'll get poisoned. Fantastic. That takes me up to 2.6, so I'll just go ahead and heal for uh, 3, or I think I'm only hurt 2. So Tantrum's back up to full life, ready to poison this guy, and he's down one die. Awesome. All right, so now we have Flom. We're going to try to soften this guy up, maybe finish him off. We'll finally use our infused incense for plus 2 attack. So that's free, plus her normal two, her one defense, and her special die. There we go. That's her four dexterity plus two attack. Targeting our friend, of course. And, oh, she can heal somebody for three. And then a defense for herself. And three attack and a bone. She has only one less than her max life. Oh, you know, I forgot. I can uh, re-roll one die. Let's re-roll that bone and try to hit him one more. There we go. Now he's down to two. <laughs> wow. 
That means that if he hits Tantrum, he'll get poisoned and die on his own turn. And let's see, her one bone can poison two people, each for one damage. So why not, right? That's fun. Okay, the puppy's gonna attack her for one. And it's a one. She's down to four. Oh, I didn't even pick who I was healing, did I? Well, it won't matter. Okay, then the dragon's going to attack uh, her and the puppy as well. Which, oh, that's right, he takes the damage from the poison, so he's defeated, yay! And I forgot her defense, so she's still at four. Or wait, her armor could have upgraded to five. Uh, whatever, I keep on forgetting that, we'll just take it. All right, so now we're in round five, and yeah, this guy's going to attack. He's down to one life, but he does get to take a turn. Would have rolled three attack dice, now he's only rolling two, one defense on Tantrum. He does hit him for one. Oh no, no he doesn't. Tantrum's got a lot of defense left. Tantrum poisons him up to two. He's got one defense, but Tantrum's not going to let him get away. He's going to move one away. Oh, wait. Ah, he dazes Tantrum. I wanted to be cool and uh, throw an axe to finish him off. But instead, we'll just do three attack dice. And yep, that is it. So clearly, it gets tough to keep the tyrants weak the further along you go. But I think I did a pretty good job of making sure the nastiest stuff you didn't get in here. So that was Too Many Bones featuring many expansions, but mainly the Slice and Dice one. And I really like this because it uh, ratchets up the tactics of how you fight people with that lab sheet in a really interesting way. So not sure I'll play with it every time, but I think it is uh, really cool if you just want to kind of add some more variety to your game. All right, thanks for watching. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.